What's up guys? Welcome to another edition of Toothpicks. I have something special for today. This is my wife's favorite type of fish, salmon. Now today, take a look at this. I'm gonna get you to get some salmon steaks. That's what we're gonna be doing. I want you to see how this is and we're gonna get it just like this. Stay tuned. All right, guys, look what we got here. We got your famous salmon steak. These are sometimes a little more, less expensive than, you know, per pound buying your whole salmon. But the thing is, a lot of people don't like to buy them because they have a lot of bones. So I'm gonna show you how to debone this, get most of the bones out or all, and how we gonna wrap it up, calling them salmon pinwheels. So show you what I got today, what you're gonna need. I have some seasonings over here. I got this Chef Paul's Seafood Magic right there we're gonna hit. And I'm gonna combine it with some of this Meat Church Holy Voodoo. That should be good. Get you a sharp knife. I got my boning knife today. You can use a fillet knife, um, but that's pretty sharp. Some tweezers if you have them, some sanitized cle uh, tweezers. Um, I use these in the kitchen a lot, so we're gonna use that and the combo of me pulling the little bones out by um, hand and some scissors. Um, that's to cut your string. So let's get to it. So what we're gonna do first, so there's some fat layer right here that's laying right here under uh, between the salmon where the um, maybe where all the inyards were in yours was in the stomach area so we're gonna cut that first so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna run my knife okay get it right under there all right kind of press down and I'm gonna run this all the way and try not to cut through that um, deep into the meat when you get to the end you might have to press down and voila, right there. Not a lot right there, just a little bit coming off. We're gonna do the same to the other side. Get your knife in there, real shallow. And you can kind of feel that fat right there. Go ahead and run it. Take your time when doing this also. That way you won't mess up and butcher the meat. All right, so I got that out. It's gonna look like a little butterfly right there. And what we're gonna do, so there's some pin um, bones in here you can feel. Now you see them going this way right here. Got, there's a little one right there. There's another one. I like to turn it over and get the ones going the opposite side because they're easy to, easier to get out. And there's one right there. And then there should be some um, more on this side. There's another one right there. Now you're wondering like how are you gonna get the other ones on out on the other side? That's connected to the bone. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. Now. Just rub your fingers across the meat and you'll, you'll pretty much feel it. And I don't feel any more on this side. They might have took them out when they cut up this fish. And so now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you what else you do. So I'm going to cut all the way here. You'll feel the bone. Okay. And you can see some of them pin bones coming up right there. They're starting to come up in the middle right here. You can see them. Go on the other side of, that, of those bones and cut up real, or closest to the top you can. Then make a cut across, okay? Do the same for the other side. Just kind of run your knife. Kind of like if you use filleting fish outside, if you ever catch fish, until you see the pin bones. See those pin bones right there? You gotta get those right there. So I'm gonna go on the other side of those bones, just like that. And I'm gonna come up just like I did the other side and run my fingers across. Now, watch this. Let's pull these out. And be very careful. And that's what it should look like right there. We'll pull the rest of those bones out right there. That's as much as we're gonna do. Now, you don't wanna cut all the way because it'll break in the process of cooking. Keep it just like this, it's kinda even all the way around. So the next process we're gonna do, just choose a side, okay? Now you got the skin right here. I'm gonna take my knife and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come halfway. You see where this kind of fat's coming up right here? I'm gonna go halfway and I'm gonna cut real shallow, okay? 
if you ever caught catfish, crappie, or any kind of hard scaled fish, or you know, like with catfish, um, their skin is tough. Sometimes you fillet it off the skin, it's a little tough, but um, rougher fish is easier to do. See, I cut a little bit of meat right there, shouldn't have done that, but that's okay. I still got some on there. And just leave that hanging right there. Just separate it, just like that, okay? Now you don't need your knife anymore. So now, I'm gonna show you how we do this to get this all together, okay? So the first thing I wanna do is wrap the inside up. Just curl that meat up right here. And the other side, you wanna kinda wrap it right here, all right? Wrap it around that other piece of meat. Now take your skin, pull it tight, and voila. See, it's kinda staying together, but we're not gonna trust that, okay? It's already the shape of that I want. I'm gonna take some of this cooking string right here, cut you off some, just enough that you can tie or, or cross the, um, the whole thing. And what I like to do is tie two overhand twists. So that's one, now two. And when you tie it down, it's gonna stay tight on you. Not too much, you don't wanna bend the skin. And then tie an, another overhand knot. That way you have to worry about your knot slipping on the first try, just like that. Take your scissors that I said you needed and cut that string off. Voila. Now, I got me a piece of cedar board right here, okay? I soaked these in about just some water for about an hour or two. And what I also failed to mention, these, these salmon, you can cook them how they are when you get them from the store, but I brine these. And let me step over here real quick. I'm gonna bring it back over there and show you what I used. A lot of people use teriyaki, whatever marinade you wanna do. I use this Allegro honey garlic today marinade. Soak that in the marinade for about, like I said, two hours. You can do it overnight if you want, but that is gonna add some flavor to this salmon. Or like I said, you can just cook it on a grill however you like. So I'm gonna get my hands washed up while y'all look at that real quick. Then we'll come over and we'll put our seasoning on real quick. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of seafood magic. Don't go overdo it, make it too salty. Okay, we're gonna hit it with a little bit of meat church. Holy voodoo, this is some good stuff, guys. I really love this stuff. It's a Cajun blend seasoning that Matt Pittman came up with. Check out his website, Meat Church Barbecue Supply and Meat Church on Instagram. There'll be some links down there in the description so you can check out the products. Go ahead and turn this over right here. And hit it the same way you did the other side. Just like that. Okay, I'm gonna hit it with a little more holy voodoo on the other side. It's already got flavor in here from the marinade. We're just gonna add this little salt sh sweetness combo. And that's all you gotta do. Okay, so we're gonna let these sit out here and I'm gonna go outside, get the grill going, or you can already have it going and I'll meet you out there. All right, so we're gonna be smoking this on my little PK grill right here. And what I basically did is took some B&B charcoal, laid it out, got it lit, laid it out flat once it was gray, put my grates on, put my grill grates on top. And then what I did was put my cedar plank on, let it heat up for about five, 10 minutes until it got a little dark. And now we're gonna be placing our salmon on the cedar plank. So let's go. We're gonna be grabbing one right here. And just put it right here on anywhere you want to. Kind of center it and give that shape back to it. Go ahead and grab your other one. Put that right there. So the reason for the grill grace is to keep um, the wood from actually really burning. It kind of, you know, deflects the heat. What are we going to be using today as far as smoke is concerned? I got a little bit of cherry wood right here. And I'm going to throw that in there for right now. Maybe throw both of them. And that's gonna give a little smoke. You wanna use it like a fruit wood 
pecan or you know sometimes you can use oak if you want but just a little bit we're gonna go ahead and close this got it set as 275 degrees should be about maybe 45 minutes and we'll be come back and we'll check this for tip so I think it's time to give the salmon a check you got some of that white little milky juice coming out I'm gonna check it with my thermo pen right here and see what the temperature we're looking for 215 120 125 we'll check the other one okay so that's about where we're gonna be glazing our salmon so what I did I got the description not the description the um, recipe in the description check it out and look below uh, how I made this this is just a pineapple glaze with some of the rub we use and a little bit of butter if you want to know that just look at the description like I said put that all over there get some of the chunks of the pineapple you need some pineapple reserves for this guys um, little jar we'll let that cook a little bit let it come up to at least 130 um, and we'll be taking these off and they'll be ready to serve all right guys so we're finished my gosh this looks good look at that glaze all on the salmon pinwheels right there I already went on and took the string off just for you know looks right there you don't want to eat that stuff so let's go ahead you know really if you got a couple people you can cut these in half I'm gonna go ahead and cut this right here right down the middle it's oh man that's tender cut through the skin look at that right there looking real good let's see if we can get that one open right there that looks real good look at the juice come out of there you know flaking away these are sitting about 135 130 135 took these off let's go ahead and give this a taste let's look at that Woo. I can't even grab that before mm, I'll grab that piece too if I can pick it up Give this a taste. Mm. That's good right there. Right there. So guys, thank you for sticking with me. New way to do sound mistakes. Don't be afraid to buy them. Takes a little work, but hey, worth it. Mm. Stay tuned for more videos in the future. Hit that like button, subscribe, share this video. Hit the instant notification bell. Until later. Toothpicks.